Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Nass. This episode, we're going to be discussing quite a few listener questions. That is about it. It's another dry week over here in Hero Clicks land, but we've got a pretty fun show planned for you. Some good discussion. So let's uh, get started, shall we? It's episode 441. Howdy, howdy. Let's get ready. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how okay, six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. LH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by Cool Stuff Inc. We can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Me, like always, is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Ooh, you know, I'm just getting over a uh, getting over probably one of the the rougher colds I've had in the last couple of years. Actually, it's like the first cold I remember Ooh. having in the last couple of years. But uh, yeah. Spent my long holiday weekend just mostly sitting on my couch, crying about Dang. stuff. Dang. Damn. Sorry to hear that. Uh, well. Yeah. Worst part was Dang. it, like, wiped my appetite out. So, even though I didn't go to, like, Thanksgiving, uh, people, like, brought food over for me, and I was like, awesome. I don't feel hungry, like, at all. <laughs> like, I don't have Ooh. any appetite. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that is really rough it's bad um, holiday for that yeah yeah no like when you want to be you know eating food and whatnot not exactly the uh holiday to be celebrating you know yikes Just, ugh, ugh. yikes i hear that man but it's on the happier side of things so yeah so <clears throat> what did make me happy was um I finally got a card in Marvel Snap that I had been wanting for a while Heck that does yeah. something real cool. Um, I'll make Calder guess what card it is later. But, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, finally did that. Um, I mean, I slept in the last, like, three days. I've probably slept close to 36, 40-ish hours. So, Dang. really caught up on sleep. There was one day, I think it was, it would have been Friday, yeah. Friday, I was just, like, miserable, could not get out of bed. Uh, finally, like, woke up around, like, 9 or 10, had enough strength to get into the living room and lay down on the couch. And my dog followed me and, like, laid down on the couch, too. And then I promptly promptly fell back asleep until, like, 2. And then I woke up in a panic because I forgot it's my weekend for the scoreboard. Uh, and the game was on Friday this week, so it's actually the last game of the season because they're not getting a bowl game. Um, ah. But yeah, I had to I had to climb. Like, <laughs> I probably shouldn't have been driving, let alone climbing, because I was just ah. so, so out of it. Like my, uh, what do you call it? Like, not vertigo, but yeah, it definitely felt like I was off balance. So, but yeah, I got through it. Equilibrium? Uh, yeah, my equilibrium. Whatever, yeah. Is destroyed. Um but no, yeah, what what did make me happy was that uh, a lot of people said that they missed me not being places. So I Aww. got I got people saying nice things and I didn't have to see people. So that's two <laughs> awesome things in one. Uh, I think I might try that out more often going forward. And then, uh, right. no, the other thing is I have a surplus of food for when I do feel like eating in the future. Uh, it's stored in my fridge, so... Um, Got some smoked prime rib that I'm really looking forward to once my palate is back to normal. Ooh, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's, I was really excited about it. I've been waiting for that prime rib for two weeks, so ah. it was pretty, pretty sad. And you didn't get to, like, enjoy it, yeah, and it's yeah. prime rib prime because you're freaking woke sick. up Friday and I was like, oh, no, like, this is, this is bad, bad. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Hey, at least you were missed. Yeah. These people, uh, <laughs> yeah. At least people weren't secretly like, man, so happy he didn't make it this year. Ugh, that guy. Right. And his weird goatee. What in the world? 
<laughs> that it is even a goatee anymore. No, it's back right to on. just normal beard now. Good, thank goodness. As we near the, the close of November. That's good. That's good. Uh, so what made me happy this... Oh, actually, really quick, I want to say. Uh, my sister saw your sign. She went and saw a ever Cornhuskers game like a week or two ago. Yeah, last week. Oh, sure. And it was like, oh, and on the way back... Because you know, she ever got out late slash hung out with friends for a while. And she was like, the score was updated. And I was like, that must be what Simeon was doing today or whatever. And I was like, maybe he might have done it. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that is what he does. That is so, the fun part. If you're uh, like games either happen, if they're home games, they happen in Lincoln. And then anyone that lives in like Omaha or Iowa, they have to drive past that sign yeah. after the game. So she was pretty she was pretty stoked to see it and uh a lot of pictures wow what a huge stadium oh my gosh oh yeah um insane college football just you know. yeah it was it was pretty cool she was like ah oh, that simian does i'm like yep. <laughs> yes it is that was pretty neat i know what made me happy this week was no, i'm not gonna lie uh pretty low week pretty bad week i didn't get sick like simian did but it wasn't wasn't great I did hit infinite in Marvel Snap, which was pretty darn awesome. I'm not going to lie. Um, really, because we'll give my biggest boon is to Vibranium Mines. Yo, shout out Vibranium Mines. Uh, thank you so much uh, for doing what you did uh, to propel me to infinite. So, like, there's definitely some location boosts that, oh, dude, like hot locations or whatever they call them that, uh, really play well to like one i mean i remember what was the one uh bar sinister bar, that was yeah nutty. bar sinister when that was big the Dang. the night crawler into uh what was it? night you crawler night crawler you move to blue marvel or yeah, kazar really blue marvel and then you like leave one spot open to drop like onslaught well no you leave spots open so that way you double, double oh double, that's double, right blue yeah. marvel yeah you and move it does one night crawler math. yeah and then it it like does like an exponential thing instead of like doubling yeah, it. Then and then onslaught, it onslaught doubles onslaught, which doubles onslaught, which yeah. is ridiculous, absolutely insane. The math is but yeah, possibly correct. It's hard to say on this game. And once those numbers start getting that high, I'm like, yeah, sure, I believe you. All right, cool. But yeah, what's now, what's it like at the top? Pretty cool. So another cool thing about the top is you can no longer go back down to the bottom. <laughs> so like you're stuck at like a hundred. You can go past a hundred. I didn't know this. This is also cool. You can go to like 110, 100 whatever. Highest I got to was like 105. Um, but then after some losses and just messing around with decks, I like with a bunch of eight cube losses, which I don't even care about anymore. Which is probably the nicest part is uh, you can't go below a hundred. It won't let you go below a hundred, which is really cool. I'm like, oh, well, that's Almost a, a bigger plus than these garbage Akoye card backs, which I don't, I don't, I don't think they look cool at all. But like, they are infinite card backs, so it's like, yes, I am better than you. I do have these. Um, it's like that's nice. All the games are so sweaty. Getting probably the sweatiest games in the world that I played were ninety, ninety nine to a hundred. Was that it took me about four games to finally get enough cubes to reach a hundred? Um. And the last game was so such a full tasty eight cube win to propel me not only to a hundred but a hundred and one point two or whatever, which was ah oh, so beautiful, just chef's kiss. You know, I loved it. Um, so yeah, like some sweaty games there in the nineties, but at a hundred, it's just like you know what? If I lose, I lose. I don't care. I have I have not a care in the world. There is no more stress, and yet also it's like. Why am I even playing? <laughs> That's another feeling. I'm just like, what? I, I'm done. I, I just do my missions every day, and then it's like, oh, I have all this free time now. I don't have to know life this game as bad as I yeah. as I was. I was just cool. Uh, so the deck I used really quickly. Uh, keep in mind, this is like with Vibranium Binds being in the spotlight. It only changes one card, and even then, I don't know if I change this card out because it still has a lot of cool uses. Going card. But out of this entire deck, I only have one card that isn't ongoing. Well, besides Spectrum, that's Nightcrawler. Just because Nightcrawler's utility is just off the friggin' charts. I love him so much. He's probably my favorite one-cost card. But it's Ant-Man, Nightcrawler, Quinjet, Mojo, Armor, Colossus, Mr. Fantastic, Captain America, Cosmo, Namor, Claw, and Spectrum. That is my 
deck that I use to get to infinite. I like this version of ongoing probably the most. Claw and Mr. Fantastic give me such great utility, so that way I can just leave Namor in a space. I know people really like Professor X and really like uh, what's this Warpath, and I like Warpath too as a character. I don't like leaving one space empty. I would prefer to have one space just have Namor in it. Um, so like the biggest thing is like Namor is immune to uh, Shang Chi for the most part, or Shang Chi for the most part, because you put Namor in the same space as Nightcrawler, and then last turn you move. Uh, so if usually I reveal first on last turn, but so they can get a Shang Chi off at that point, I guess. Um, but for the most part, he's safe from Shang Chi until I decide to move Nightcrawler, which is really nice. Uh, Cosmo, because Enchantress is actually the worst. If you play Enchantress, uh, I hate you. Uh, you're the worst human being alive. Uh, that is why Cosmo exists. Cosmo also exists because uh, I also hate Black Panther players and Wong, <laughs> specifically Wong, Black Panther, Arnim Zola players. But yeah, it's a really fun deck. Um, people might say whatever they want to say about Mojo, but Mojo has this level of control where it's like, if I can win a space more than them and have four characters on it and they have three and it's like they either have to give up and not try to win that space or they got to play something pretty freaking insane to try to beat Mojo's like plus six once they finally play something yeah. there to fill out that fourth slot. That Remember, a, like some cards get like crazy boosts and some get like weirdly low boosts mojo gets yeah. a massive boost yeah. um i will say part of this colossus and Wiz and lizard were like switched out for each other almost daily or hourly while i was playing this a lot i, I like colossus i like his not destroy i like his no negatives can really help out but also third can kind of like if i put lizard and mojo in the same space but then i also stack it with like something else that's good and it's like, okay, well, I don't want Lizard to be a 5. I, I don't want Mojo to be an 8 either. You know what I mean? So it, it puts them, like, you play Lizard first. They start stacking that location. Maybe they even fill it up to 4. And then you drop Mojo there, and you're like, you are a fool. Got him. <laughs> uh, feels really good. So it's a great deck. I say everybody should try it out. I still think it's really strong, even without Vibranium Mimes. But obviously, Vibranium Mimes giving, mimes, mimes giving you the... You have Quinjet, a zero-cost or power ongoing effect, which I can make a six with the Spectrum drop, is insane. Because then last yeah. turn, you literally drop all your Vibranium you've been holding onto, and you also drop Spectrum of uh, the entire board, and it's, it's Ship's Kiss beautiful. Yeah. You know, so I really want to try like a full, not quite full, but like a nearly full like shield team at some point, if I get all the cards. Ooh, cool. um, Once they add Maria Hill and Coulson. Yeah, yeah. Also, like, Nick Fury, uh, man, I just think that card's trash. Like, I don't <laughs> I don't know why anyone plays, like, their, their turn five, five energy as a guy that calls in three random cards. Like, it'd be, it'd be one thing if it just gave you, like, one six, co like, six energy card that's, like, cost zero or something. That might be broken, but, like, it'd be better if, like, you could use Nick Fury and then actually play two of those cards but you're investing a lot into playing him and then like your return yeah. is like maybe giganto or whatever like you know you have no idea what like the best oh, right. card you're going to yeah. pull is well the the problem with six cost cards <laughs> as a whole is your deck kind of needs to be built around them you yeah. know like they all do some wildly different things where you know getting if you're going to drop a, six a cost single cards, card turn six Ugh. it better be able to like either keep two locations one or win two locations from your opponent because yeah. if it can't do at least one of those like i don't know there's a lot of people i've seen that they're winning one location i'm winning the other two and then like turn six rolls around and they play like cosmonaut and i'm like congratulations you won a location meanwhile i like had the easy job of taking the other two. Like I, yeah. I don't know. Cosmonauts not not cosmonaut infinite. That's the second time I've done that tonight. Yeah, dude. What the heck? Um, but no, Cal Calder. Uh, I'll give you a hint as to the the, the card that I got. And the hint okay. is, um, this card made me buy the the November season pass. Oh, you so got Artem Zola then, yeah. right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was trying him for a while with uh, 
Devil Dino. I was trying him with because okay. you have to play him with like a five energy something good. Um, but I had already seen this tech before. I had to, had it played against me, so the reason I had to buy the season pass, the re- the reason why that this deck is fairly obvious uh it doesn't really matter what the first half of the deck is i really like having storm uh i like shutting off one location because um it's the end game that you're worried about so the cards that i have in my current deck maybe not like the most beneficial like i have agent 13 but really she's just a hindrance so i don't know why i have her in there but i've got agent 13 yondu cable armor storm killmonger Wong, Enchantress, Moon Girl, Devil Dino, Black Panther, and then Arnim Zola. Moon Girl's only in there if, like, turn four I haven't pulled Wong and I haven't pulled Zola. Then maybe I get to, like, double up on my Devil Dino. That's still a decent win condition, usually. Um, But, yeah, the goal is you drop Wong, turn four, turn five, you drop Black Panther, and then turn six, you drop Arnim Zola. Uh, Arnim Zola will then destroy like he will leave that location at a zero um but then he places the black panther in the black panther and wong in the other two locations so if i can shut one down with storm and my opponent puts like a couple cards there or whatever i don't ever put anything there i just like leave it because um black panther being played on wong means that he will double his so it's on reveal he doubles his power so he'll go from a four to an eight and then he'll do that again so he'll be at a 16 and then when arnim zola copies him he'll go from a 16 to a 32 which is already like pretty nuts for a single card to be able to get that um but if you if you uh, arnim zola copies wong first then black panther goes to like a 128 or something so like that's happened multiple times where it's one of like the few decks where i get easy like eight core wins or whatever like over and over again because people just never see it come and win yeah i don't know how as soon as i see long played if i don't have cosmo in my deck or if i accidentally played cosmo in a different location i always leave because i'm like i can't win it i don't know how many times like i I get Cosmo out there and then Black Panther. A few times it's been like Cosmo, Black Panther, and then turn six. Um, like Wong, Black Panther. I, yeah, Wong. <laughs> yeah, not Cosmo. Uh, Wong, use- Black Panther, and then turn six I'll drop like Arnim Zola. And after he does his thing, all of a sudden they're like uh, Shang-Chi like pops out. And I'm like, oh, uh, you thought it was going to okay. be like that. No, no. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, that is so. There's a few things that like shut this deck down pretty easily. Uh, Cosmo, obviously, yeah. Cosmo, Shang Chi. If they play it like they, if they know what's coming and they like manage yeah. to drop it in like the right square, uh, it also depends on timing because Shang Chi's on reveal. So if yeah. they reveal before, doesn't work. Um, Professor X can also really shut it down because while I'm doing my stuff, if they lock down mm-hmm. a location that I wasn't bothering with true that really sucks for me uh so there's like stuff like that but most of the average strategies that i've seen straight up do not win against this and it's it's such yeah. a good like combo i had it played against me and like like i said when i got arnim zola i was like i still have devil dinosaur in the deck because he's a good five energy uh yeah. card to drop have two you're not you know you're not playing that many cards anyway so yeah no so yeah you need you need something big and beefy um, for Arnim Zola to copy. I tried it with like White Tiger, garbage. Don't do that. Oh, uh, like even White Tiger on Wong, I just don't care for. Like the seven energy. Like again, at most with White Tiger Wong and like Odin, you're going to fill a location. It's going to be like twenty eight. Black Panther getting doubled and then copied over will be like eating that every single time so yeah but that's yeah that's what i'm on uh funny thing about it like even though i've been winning a lot a lot of times uh i'll get like close to like i'll get within like one or two cores of or not one or two one or two uh whatever stats 
attack value. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. Oh, they'll they'll right, beat sure. me by like a one or two. And so I've actually made no progress. I'm still right at 50. Oof. Although so I have far. I have crawled back. I dug myself a huge hole at one point trying to... I was trying to get boosters from for some terrible card, so I put it in like a deck. Uh. And I was just trying to get the boosters so I could get a cheap like level up. And I dug myself down to like 45. It was pretty rough. Ooh, Simeon, no. Yeah. Almost put the game away. Almost. Almost. Ooh. Almost. Right on. This is our, uh, that is our, our Marvel Snap check in. We're I'm excited for next season. They've previewed some cards they're going to show off that look really good. The collector tokens and all that stuff. We won't get into it. We're not a Marvel Snap podcast, but next season is going to be uh, a lot of fun, and I'm sure we'll talk about it when it happens. All right, let's go ahead get into some hero clicks. Question. There are dozens of us. Dozens! We said light discussion this week. We'll say looking forward to this weekend. Hopefully some stuff comes out of PAX Unplugged. Maybe sometime in the week we'll see a gingerbread man dial. You never know. But for right now, we don't have that much going on in the world of hero clicks as far as news goes. So that's why I'm thankful that we have some questions. We're going to kick it off with Malcolm Rush. Send us some questions on Facebook. And then we'll move on to uh, we had a post on Facebook earlier today asking for any listener questions. And then we have some Discord questions. So Malcolm's are all about legacy cards. Best, worst, and favorite legacy cards. Simeon. Uh, best, worst, and favorite. Um, I think one of the best ones is the Modoc from uh, the Captain America set. Uh, I think he's an awesome pick, and I think he's just a really well-designed legacy card. Um, the worst, I think you can just take your pick from the Wonder Woman 80th set. Like, I have not played any of those. There's probably some other ones like Morg or something that are equally bad, <laughs> but like... As a whole, those are all pretty low on my list of stuff I want to play. And then my favorite is the, um, what is the the FF set? Um, the original foundation? FF. No, the frightful, oh. not frightful. Uh, Fantastic Forces, I yeah. think. Uh, the Doom, the the hooved Doom, Doom. Oh, with hooves. okay. Yeah, the Doom. Yeah, I really like that one. I think he's fun he makes the little mosquitoes with the pulse wave stuff i think the mosquitoes have like poison but he when he hits somebody he gets to make one and he does all kinds of like fun stuff um yeah him and swarm would be a pretty fun team to play together sometime be hilarious uh so for best i also said modok i think when you think of like grand scheme of like legacy cards you cut his point value in half you give him all these cool abilities i'm like wow i am just so impressed with modok First, and this is purely a flavor choice. It's they're not actually a bad figure, but I'm going to call them worse. Uh, that's Wolverine because they took away his animal keyword, which was the only reason I even owned that figure was because it was the only Wolverine with the animal keyword, um, or at least it was the newest one at the time with the animal keyword. And now you took my favorite part about that Wolverine away, and I'm just like, well, unplayable to me anyway. And then my all-time favorite legacy. Cards. This is like a grouping of them, so this is kind of cheating, but it's the Wrecking Crew that they made as legacy cards. They're cool, uh, can't be shot in the debris uh, type ability, move, like moves and stuff they get, which I really enjoy. So I just super dig Wrecking Crew legacy cards are probably my favorite. Nice. All right. What makes a good candidate past Hero Clicks to become a legacy card? Thanks, Simeon. Ooh, a uh, good candidate. I just said uh figures that are either famous or infamous um or figures that just like had really good sculpts but basically like a figure that makes you uh, I, I don't know like makes you think of like you know when you think of like an iconic figure in hero clicks history it's one that like you instantly comes to mind like that's what i think most of the ones that they grab are or ones that they they grab that are good are See, typically, I'd say there's like some oddball choices where it's like, one was asking, like he kind of said, like Morg, you know, no one was really pining to get Morg remade. You know what I mean? Like there are some kind of oddball choices that are out there um, that are just more so to like fill out sub themes. I think as a fine way to do legacy cards, like I am cool with them filling out a sub theme in a set with legacy cards. To me, it's not preferred. And I don't think that makes because they fill out a sub theme 
good candidate for a legacy card. Like, I'm really happy to have the Winter Guard and that I can play them now. Yeah. But the fact that we use two of our legacy picks on Winter Guard members, you know what I mean, um, as opposed to getting... Because, like, these sculpts are nothing special. Dark Star's pretty cool, but, like, Ursa Major's a bear standing there, you know? We could have gotten, like, figures that I think were really iconic or figures that are really cool or sculpts that looked amazing, you know? So that's basically along the same lines what you said. I think that if you make a legacy card figure, these sculpts should either be really, really awesome, like, really, really cool, like Hawkeye on the Sky Cycle, amazing sculpt, Black Knight on his trusty Iron Steed, whatever. Really cool sculpt. Hammer Floor Captain America is both an iconic figure and a really cool sculpt. So yeah, infamous, famous, iconic figure of Heroclix Past slash good sculpt. This is like, for me, the number one thing is to be a qualifying candidate for a legacy card. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, number three is, which legacy card are worse than the original versions? This one's hard because most of them at least in like the barest minimum way are better because like they're cheaper or they just do something more interesting or whatever kind of thing, you know, but, uh, I put the, um, the XXX, XXS Cyclops, the, the super oh. rare. So, yeah. I put him because, well, just for the simple fact that I liked his leadership perplex combo even like without the like uh what do you call it the student id even without the student id i liked the headmaster trait i really liked his like angry that you hit one of his like friends i don't there's a yeah. lot of flavor going on in the original one and so yeah i just really liked uh that cyclops how he was in the newer ones just a little bit of a downgrade he's not that bad like i'd still play him but yeah, if I was going to pick one, I would have to pick that one. Okay, you know, I was thinking of choosing that one, like mine, because like you know, the other one was just like, yo, call him in, he messed your entire world up, you know. Um, and this one is just it's a totally different role. I don't know, it's it's a really tough thing. It's like is he technically worse in a way. Like yeah, he's not getting played as much as the other one. But is he like terrible? No, he fits a totally different role. He does a different thing. I think that's a good choice. I said M Mole Man. I think he is worse. Uh, I I think yet yeah, it's along the same lines, right? Like he fits a different role. He doesn't do what he used to do. But like Monster Mind Control was so good. And throughout history, whenever I could play Golden Age, I'm like they just keep making more good monsters to mind control. Mole Man will never have a lack of targets, and you get rid of his whole ability to mind control friendly monsters, and it's like oh yeah, that's fair. It's not what I, you know, when you take away, like what we said about choosing an iconic figure, you take away the part that makes that figure iconic, makes their legacy card kind of less iconic. You know what? In a way. You know what I yeah. mean? It's kind of tough. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Like the the one big thing that they were known for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and when it's like, that's the only thing they do, like that's the only thing people think about them for doing, at the very least, I guess lot of figures that if you give them a change you typically add a bunch of other cool stuff and so it makes them better even if you take away like iconic thing but sometimes like well that's that was like the thing we knew them for it's like uh i don't know when your dad shaves his mustache you're like who are you <laughs> yeah. this is person that i'm talking to because you're not how, my father how dare you come into my house strange man <laughs> yeah, it's like feel like i know you but you're you're different than i than i <laughs> remember uh number four Legacy cards, besides Thanos, WizKids went overboard and made it too powerful than the original version. Ooh. Uh, other than Thanos, I mean, obviously, the first that comes to mind is Apocalypse. Like, he's... I think those are the only two that have been watch-listed um, out of all, like, the legacy figures that I can remember. Uh, I'm gonna throw in one that's probably fine, but Lockjaw, compared to the original, he does Ooh, a lot. that's lock, fair. Like... He does a whole heck of a lot for his little 30-point cost. Um, yeah, so I, I would have to go with those two. Lockjaw's good. I didn't even think about Lockjaw, honestly. Yeah, that is a really good pick. I just said Apocalypse. I was just being a, a straight player hater. Yeah. Up and down the block. I was like, yep, not Apocalypse. Way too good. Well, also, you made him a bull in your standard game format. Like, that's maybe just the biggest reason is that he's not only 500 points anymore, right? 
he could be yeah. 300, 200, or 100. Yeah, you gave him it's options like, that were really good. Not that that, I guess not that that makes him overboard. They did the same thing with like Thor's Chariot, you know, made him playable in their normal format. But yeah. Which legacy cards in the original versions, WizKids did not get it right either time. Like, this version sucks, and then the legacy card also just kind of sucks. Oh, man. This one, I honestly could not think of one because, I, I mean, I'd have to go with, like, the peanut base like, Valkyrie or something because I just, like, expected sure. more from it each time. But outside of, like, you know, something like that, I don't think I have a solid answer where... I could say, like, you know, this this figure alone was bad, like, originally and the Legacy. Most of them at least improved slightly. What? Yeah. And so, yeah. No, this is a throwaway for me, because there's really no Legacy card that is even worse. Like, a bad version, right? Like, I've, I've, there's yet to be a Legacy figure that it's like, well, this is a bad figure, and this one is also just bad. You know what I mean? Like, you could maybe say that, I guess guess i don't know about like t or something but like she has all these free clicks like she is at least better you know like yeah. mess it up both times as like how the question is saying the throwaway i had was just like wonder woman one of them's yeah. got to be wonder woman one of those i've never literally ever spent more than two seconds looking at a wonder woman legacy card but one of those has to be uh on par with its old version just both bad maybe i i have no, again no idea the throwaway uh answer on this question you could redo a legacy card. Which one would you choose, and how would you fix it? Uh, if I could redo one of the legacy cards that they've done, I think the one that I would want to give another crack at the most would probably be that Cyclops that I was talking about. For sure. Um, again, like I don't think that he... I think he just does different stuff, and it's technically cheaper. I think it's just different than the original one. Uh, but... I would really like i don't know he's he's one of those ones where when i think about him i think of that like which side of the map's he on kind of thing and i always thought that hey, was really yeah. cool but yeah I, I, he's one of the few characters where i wish the legacy card had more of the original kind of flavor there fair i'm gonna sound like a broken record on this one but it is hammer of thor captain america the most hyped ever since they announced legacy cards existed i was like well they gotta make hammer thor he's so iconic he's one of my favorite versions of america you know, and the legacy card comes out and it's you know not a downgrade but it's like a side grade and all the hype that i put on it didn't live up to the standards that i put in my mind you know as a big captain america fan and everything it's uh changing the shield ricochet <laughs> instead of deflection trajectory <laughs> to me deflection trajectory is just so iconic why would you ever change that to shield ricochet oh my god <laughs> Um, and then he took away his ignores outdoor blocking um, type like bits that was in his special line of fire. So like to, to change it up, you know, like the healing thing is neat, and the fact that he can heal from his willpower, he can heal up and then heal all the way back to his leadership. That's really cool. Got no reducer, and he's just gonna get like you know one shot or two tapped. I'm sure in some games he'll have the chance to heal, but it's way less likely when you have no reducers whatsoever. Um, so, like, the healing thing is kind of null and void for himself anyways. To help his team, it's really cool. But, yeah, like I've got a lot of problems with that Legacy card. I think maybe some sidestep, maybe some RCE, because what I always use this Captain America was I, I buffed the heck out of him with, like, shield or enhancement or perplex or something. So that way, when he sent his shields through walls and hills and anything else in his way, he was hitting hard. You know, you didn't have to give him any pen blast, but maybe make it naturally on his own, easier to buff up his mediocre stats. Even at the time, mediocre stats, 10 for 3. Um, living Legend, this Captain America, of all Captain Americas, deserves the Living Legend trait, because he is. He's a living legend. This is a legendary legacy Captain America I would like to see the living legend trait come back i loved it for the captain america set that was really cool i think going forward especially for legacy captain americas because they kind of are living legends in their own right you're they're like literally legendary hero clicks are coming back that are still alive a uh, living legend should definitely be part of it and if you weren't going to and i'll end this rant uh, you could have added him some charger combat reflexes down dial to make better use of the close combat expert would have been cool i'm not saying all of these but uh, several of these i think would make it better if you didn't want to do like the deflection trajectory thing where he just ignores stuff flat out, you could have made a really fun, flavorful shield bounce power. 
I had talked about him being able to target a you know opposing character, bounce it off, and then target another opposing character, maybe keep going Wingard style, or even the ability to target a piece of blocking terrain, and then from that blocking terrain, uh, target an opposing character in line of fire from that square, where he's like bouncing it off the wall. It would be a really, really cool mechanic. But yeah, uh, that's the one I would fix. Question seven Malcolm has. How long should WizKids wait to redo a hero clicks before it becomes a legacy card? Interesting. Yeah. We've seen legacy cards be like while they're still, still modern. modern. You know? yeah. I think which hasn't be... happened in a while. Though. No. I, well, wasn't it only the uh, two by two sentinel? Uh, I think yeah, it was just the two by two sentinel. Like yeah, you're right, it was just the two by yeah. two sentinel. You used to think the beats fade and almost got lumped in there, but almost yeah, almost Fabian, and then BTS Wonder Woman was out by. Every... So yeah, yeah, it was just that sentinel. I guess that's it. Yeah. Um, I would I would say two rotations, four years. I guess it's the figure a little bit. You know what I mean? Probably what I would say. After two that's rotations fair. pass, yeah. or roughly four years, I think legacy it. I would prefer you now always it being like five or six years plus or golden age figures. There are some silver age figures that I think sure legacy, but those are kind of new enough to where it's like don't feel like a lot of Silver Age figures need legacy cards, and I would like to more flush out all the Golden Age figures before we do too much Silver Age stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah, I think there's enough enough Silver and even previous, like prior to Silver, there's enough Golden Age stuff that we could work our way through. Still don't and think we need full sets of legacy cards, though. Oh, I think full sets is ridiculous. I would like to see. I don't see... even think people would actually want that. I think if people saw what that looked like, they'd realize they don't actually want that. It takes away the specialness of legacy cards. I think collectors who own a full set are like, "Yeah, just give it, give me a full set." I'm like, "No, oh, that's a bit ridiculous." Let's be real. That's ridiculous. I think. Uh, do you think little card packs, Pokemon esque, as eight or twelve legacy cards, especially if they start doing this like legacy team up card for sets? like the free inclusion on the brick but especially with this last set when i wanted so many of the legacy cards and so many of the team up cards but i wasn't going to keep buying bricks and cases to just open that one little pack you know i would like to see maybe in the future uh countertop display just legacy cards like kind of what they did with uh the constructs from war light how it's just constructs in those packs that'd be kind of cool i would like to see it anyways uh, what Heroclix character do you want WizKids to make into a legacy card that are not from a Marvel or DC set? Ooh, not from a Marvel or DC set. Like, the odds of this happening is, like, 0%. Yeah. Maybe, maybe 50. I Who mean, knows? I don't know what pretty, the legacy rules low. are. But for a non-Marvel DC set getting uh, legacy cards, that's... Yeah. This is kind of an out-there fun one. Uh, so, yeah, if I was going to go with something, obviously, like, I picked, like, WWE... I'd really like yeah. Eddie or Asuka. Those are the two that I played the most. Out of the TMNT stuff, I'd love for Mudman to get like some legacy. Jeez, oh, the back. Pog? Yeah, what? he deserves it. How? Uh, what? What do you mean, how? He's just so good. Uh, not how does he deserve it, but I mean, like, we're giving a Pog a card, you know what I mean? Like, it's just yeah. funny. No, it's just a like a hollow sticker that you stick on oh, the gee. bystander. Gosh. Um, what are, man... I feel my like biggest Yu-Gi-Oh, one. Yu Gi Oh would be like too many to like oh, man, sift. Yu would be wild. So like, even... if they were gonna do a full set, that'd be when I would be okay with it. Is if they did like a full set of Pacific Rim like legacy cards, or a full set of like Street Fighter, uh, something like that. I don't know how they would pick like one or two. I really don't. Yeah. Would uh, probably my biggest one is from WWE, but the opportunity to what they've done before where it's just give characters different flavor make them the heel turn version make them this alternate version make them this version yeah so i would like to see tis the season big show but it is him from jingle all the way as the big santa claus that throws arnold schwarzenegger out of the Santa factory warehouse place it could be really funny Macho Man as Bone Saw could be really, really funny and really cool. Um, like that, where it's like, and I mean, you can obviously make Undertaker biker tape something, you know what I mean? There's endless opportunities when it comes to just the small pool of wrestlers they already have and all the different 
gimmicks and you know personas that they've had in the ring uh doctor of thugonomics john cena would be hilarious for all his powers rhyme or something you know something ridiculous like that could be really cool so i would like to see that also just wrote down you know lone ranger (laughs) there's only four figures if you're ever going to do a complete set probably the easiest one to do uh a very low bar they could be anything and you would people go buy lone ranger and could get you would save so much space for so many comic and game stores that still are holding on to lone ranger be their hero whiz kids be so funny all right nine any suggestions to whiz kids to improve legacy cards what do you think simeon just follow follow the heart of the card i don't know i really don't have any suggestions um I think too many of these characters have too many different comic versions and takes. And I think, you know, people are going to enjoy whichever ones that they enjoy. And yeah, there's just not much more to it than that. Like, I don't know. Yeah. There's, there's not really an overall improvement, I can say, even though I've nitpicked, you know, some legacy cards being better or worse or blah, 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 blah. Just keep ma- At the end of the day, just keep making them. Yeah, that's. All people really want is just to keep getting like, legacy cards. Even like that Cyclops where I'm like, oh, I like the original better. I wish it was closer to that. Like, even like in that instance, somebody probably likes the new version better than like that old right. version. And, yeah. you know, if you want like a more comic accurate one instead of like a gameplay dynamic one, a new version is better in that aspect and like stuff like that. So, yeah, it's keep making them because, I mean, even if half of them are just okay, the other half have usually been stellar. Like most of them are really good. Hey, just agree with all the same sentence sentiments there. Ten, which legacy cards WizKids made you don't own but want to get? So this is straight up what's your wants list for legacy cards, I guess? Yeah, this is most of them for me. Um I don't own I own some of the like a lot of the figures actually at this point. Um but I do not own most of the legacy cards. I just have not traded for a lot of them. I don't play a lot of them. So, yeah, um, the one that I, I've played the most is that Doctor Doom that makes the mosquitoes. But, nice. yeah, I I own, like, the Future Foundation ones outside of, I don't have, like, Morgan Le Fay. Um, and then I have the ones that came out in that, what was that, like, mid-set, like, weird... Oh, the 2021 storyline thing. Oh, yeah. The I have those, storyline, yeah. Sure. Redshift, Airwalker. So, yeah, there's a lot that I don't have, but at the same time, I just, like, haven't gotten around to it. I will say one that I really should get my hands on sooner than later is that uh, the Namor that came out in Empire. I really want to get him with the yeah. power action standard character from your sideline, 50 points or more, that has the dolphin symbol. I think that's a really, really fun cool. figure. I also think it's a fun figure. I still own that figure. It's almost going to be a year since I got it uh, come December, and I still don't own that, like, the Namor figure it goes to. I still have the, I have the card, but no Namor. The, all the other figures I want, I have the figure, but no card. It's like Ursa Major, all the stuff from Captain America except Dark Star, uh, She-Hulk. I love that She-Hulk. The fact that she was one of the first years to get a legacy card, and I was like, this is actually one of my favorite versions of She-Hulk, which is really cool. Doc, Hammer, Thor, Cap, Jarvis, uh, Supernova, Thor are all still legacy cards I need. Oh, and Coulson. I still don't have Coulson. But yeah, so that's our legacy discussion. Thank you for the questions, Malcolm. Super duper appreciate it. Going over to the Facebook post. Questions here. McConnell Lamar asks, X-Men seem to have the most mechanics at their disposal with Krakone Revival, Recruiter, Swap, etc., what modern age mechanics would you like to see other keywords get in modern age? Hmm. What do you think, Simeon? I'll also add like rally. <sighs> X Men have yeah, most they have prominent the rally the as most well. Amount of rally for sure. Um, man, modern age mechanics like to see other keywords get in modern. Honestly, like all of it, I'd like to see everything on like an even keel, kind of like playing field. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's too much to ask. For, like right. you know, we'll see as much as like, I. But yeah, like a Justice League version of Swap. As I mean, I know a lot of people hate Swap, but like I hate Swap. If we're gonna like have Swap all. for some things, we should have it for multiples. Even though it's gotten to the point right now where it seems uh, you don't even have to like have similar keywords anymore. Like you can just 
You can just swap like anything. Build an team. entire team yeah. that is X Men, and you're like, I don't think any of these people are mutants. At least one of them is going to be a mutant, I guess, for an X Men team nowadays. But like, you can build an X Men team that is like, is not the X Men. Swap it all around. It's kind of ridiculous. I do think swap should be for like Batman family in Justice League because Batman's that kind of guy. I again, I just hate I hate the swap mechanics so much. So unfun to play against. It's just it's just not cool. Um, rally like always. I think a ton of characters can use rally. I think it's cool. That, like the Guardians all have rally. I think no, I think just Manus might have rally. But I would like to see like Avengers get rally. Justice League, Batman family. Oh, we did see that Justice League and the Batman family are going to be getting rally and Batman yeah. team up. From what we've seen so far. So like that's pretty cool. But I would like to see just really. Any, any of these mechanics i don't want why i will say i don't want to see keywords keyword cheating plus swap for anybody yeah. else again because keyword think, cheating plus if swap we're gonna is keep much. doing swap it's a bit ridiculous to stop like granting yeah. keywords to like generic people definitely <laughs> definitely need to chill on the keyword cheating if swap is going to be a thing yeah. for the same keyword. it is That's... like a headache just to build around um also krakoan revival doesn't make sense outside of x-men so i guess uh, not really. Unless you could find some reason why Lazarus Pit, yeah, I but will... like it'd have to be like assassin keyword only or something. Um, yeah, it would be cool to see like what bystanders different keyword or different like Krakoan revival type people had. You know, it would be fun. So if you yeah, if it was like Rachel Ghoul and like the Assassins Guild, and you know, you spawned like a Batman, a Robin, uh, or like Damian Wayne, I don't know, stuff like that, instead of the skinless assassin and <laughs> Coven Akaba and whatever. I can't remember all of them. There's too many. That's a lot. Right. Jay Solomon asks, are we going to see more of Simeon screenshot quoting me out of context in 2023? It's the content that people want. Is it? Is it? <clears throat> Is it? Uh, this is probably the part where I'll insert some audio clips of Jay saying something nice about me or something. Oh, dude, nice. I love it. Yeah. What a fool. Really who, who answers Discord calls and gets recorded? Silly man. Foolish. Never do that, Never do that Jay Solomon. You're better than this. He also leaves a pretty tasty comment that could be very easily changed to under Anthony's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right here, which I love. Uh, but going on Anthony, he says, updates on any big 2023 goals you're working on. Well, there's a lot probably don't want to spoil for you. Yeah. Sadly, no, no that's updates. The thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some big 2023 goals that we're working on for sure. Uh, as of this point, like, like really sadly, most of the updates that you'll get will be like, at most a week ahead of time before yeah, someone drops. We're so sorry. Yeah. So it'll be like, watch this premiere or something like that. But yeah, it's going to be some cool stuff. I think you guys are going to be able to, things are happening right now where content is going to be a lot easier for us to make and in the past. So get ready to be sick and tired of seeing Dial H for Hero Clicks uploads. Honestly, probably. We'll probably ramping up production next year that's like the loosest i could probably the vaguest i could be with like something to be excited about for updates is that you will definitely be getting if you thought this year and last year were really good years next year is looking to be a really really solid year for content and we're very excited about it yeah for sure yeah. three rules too i'm just kidding <laughs> if you don't even know what that is do you yeah most of you that that i mean at least anyway. according to the view count no kidding no kidding uh anyways go on to our discord be ready for the patreon plug because you know why sure is tough with all this work and we appreciate discord because discord is where all of our patreons flock to we have a beautiful community over on our discord from our patreon community uh, five dollars or more gets you part of the discord it also gets you Early access to YouTube videos. It gets you behind the scenes bloopers, which you can literally not see anywhere else. We will never release these behind the scenes, literally ever. 
Only way to see them is be a part of the Discord. You also get cool action tokens and stuff on certain tiers, t-shirts and stuff on certain tiers, the Chainsaw Ship shirt. You can still get until the end of this year. After that, it will no longer be available. It's the double chainsaws with chip in the middle. It's a dope-looking t-shirt. And if you want it, you have to join the $25 tier. So 25 bucks for a t-shirt, plus you'll get six action tokens. We just dropped, I finally got them, all the Avengers Forever and X of Swords action tokens slash bystanders. So your Apocalypse bystanders, your whatever killer robots your captain britain core and all of your avengers forever stuff we didn't make any of the bystanders already in the token pack but this is the only way you can get the aim of bystanders for modok the only way you can get well besides owning a rick jones that came with this cardboard but if you don't have a rick jones that came with this cardboard ones get the bystanders of simeon ian and i as blazing skull captain america and namor which is really fun I say Swimmy and Bruce as Namor, uh, as so yeah. pointed out on the bystanders, pretty funny. So there's that. There's also the immortal tokens for Thanos, the cool claw sound construct token. These are all out. I might uh, probably release pictures sometime this week. You guys can check them out before you decide to join the Patreon. But seriously, I think the Patreon is super worth your money. Also do monthly giveaways. Probably ramp up monthly giveaways here in a little bit. Right now, again, in a phase of transition able to do as much monthly giveaways but i also think our content i want to shift world of hero clicks especially for patreon really heavy into like monthly giveaway blah 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 blah. i want more than anything is for people to just want to support us because we make good content you guys want to see us make more good content all the patreon money goes to getting either new equipment for dial h for food while we're out filming paying for like making simeon's bachelorette costume day of you know buying the clothes the dye like that in order to get the costume done you know so that way we can have to take too many expenses out of our own pocket that being said we already do that a lot anyways but the patreon is purely goes back into either rewards for people on the patreon for action tokens for t-shirts for whatever also just goes into the channel supplies we need for videos audio equipment, et cetera, et cetera, travel and stuff. So I want to throw in giveaways when I can as a reward to you guys for helping out to give you an extra you know, bang for your buck. I don't want the Patreon to grow just because I say, oh, I've got to chase up for whatever. And you're like, I don't care about Dial H, but I do want a shot at getting that chase. So I'm going to join the Patreon. That's not the vibe I want to go yeah, for. for it's, the not the a Patreon. It's, a... Yeah, it's not a raffle system. It's a... It's not a raffle system. And Patreon themselves... I uh, don't like that and go against that. And they're like, at any text post, if I say giveaway or raffle or blah, 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 blah. Like, it's not supposed to be for gambling. Even Patreon's like, all right, guys, get out. <laughs> so I, I do want to drift away from that. I like giving extra free stuff when I ship out the stuff anyways, though. If I have commons, uncommons, I want to get rid of and throw them in there. You know, maybe we want one man's trash, number man's treasure, treasure. Mostly, I do want the Patreon. And I've now ranted about it for like five minutes now. Wanted to shift into whole. We like your content. We want to keep seeing your content. We're gonna support you. That's all I want. Even if it's a dollar a month, like it does we appreciate it? it? Let's us do the cool things that we gotta do over here. Dialing true. Anyways, rant over. These questions are from our Discord, which you can do by joining the Patreon. And then I'll I'll not mention it again. E. Punchy Ranch Man Chance McCall says, "What would you do for the upcoming Batman set if you had complete?" Creative control of it. Ooh, Simeon. If I had complete creative control. Um, Now, he he says upcoming Batman set. So, like, I'm going to assume that the set is the same name, right? Or am I assuming, like... I would say it's the same name. (laughs) Like, the Batman set is... uh, For this... For this mental gymnastics that I'm about to perform. Okay. Am I assuming that, like, the, the set list is the exact same? Like... I, I can't, like, change, like, any of, like, the sub-themes or anything? I guess I would say the set is called Batman team Yeah. Or are you designing a set that's just called Man team No. So, so my number one thing would be um, all of the legacies would probably, because I'm, like, a sucker for them, they'd all be, like, the brave and the bold ones. Uh, the two-by-two, two, or the not two-by-two, two, the peanut base ones. Um, I think that was brave and bold, right? I was yeah so that'd be that'd be like one of my first things uh that's what i would one of my things would be for legacy cards um let's see for the lanterns oh, man it's hard because i don't really want to like say like get rid of like the the titans or get rid of like the scooby gang 
I definitely don't think get rid of the Scooby Gang because no, gotta it's keep just, Scooby yeah, Gang. it's just cool that like we actually get them in clicks. Um, so yeah, like I would say, it seems like we're getting a decent amount of Titans. I would like to see, I would like to see more Lanterns than Titans in the set. So I would probably do like, I don't know, like four, four of the Titans, four of the bad guys, or just. I don't know how many how many titans are there. There's one, two, three, four, five, five normal ones. Beast Boy, Robin, like Starfire, yeah. Cyborg, Raven. Yeah. So do like the five, and then maybe five bad guys, quote unquote bad guys, and then uh, devote like the rest of the stuff to Scooby Gang. I wonder if we'll see like the their random monsters and stuff because like, we haven't seen those yet, but. It would be interesting if, like, they get, like, old man McGarthy in, like, ghost costume, you know? I would like that. Like, you know, uh, Enter 49er or whatever, like, the night guy. Yeah. And, you know, like, all those old... Yeah, that'd be really cool to see. We Obviously, we've only seen the OG, like, just the Scooby gang, but it is, like, Anna Barbera looking classic Scooby gang. No, like, changes in their... Like, early 2000s to 2010s different like animation styles classic scooby gang so it'd be really cool to see like the dude down under like the scuba diver guy and like the like i said like it'd be really cool to see all like the monsters and villains that they fought that'd be really awesome definitely yeah so the way i would change it much kind of the way like in said i would want to add villains aren't in it hopefully the villains but again all we've seen is scooby gang to keep it Batman team up themed, because like I'm not the biggest Batman fan in the world. When I think Batman team up, and I said it a few months ago, I think Brave and the Bold, aka my personal favorite Batman animated TV show that came out around like 2008, 2010, because every episode of Brave and the Bold was a Batman team up. Basically, it started with a like one minute opener where it was him teaming up with somebody else would go to the rest of the episode, which was, again, him teaming up with another superhero. So it was really cool. Aquaman got a lot of personality in that show. Guy Gardner yeah. was the main Green Lantern, for the most part, in that show. We saw Buana Beast, uh, characters that I didn't even know existed, like him. Uh, really cool. Buana like, Beast, I new. only know from that. I've never yeah, seen I've him never in heard of him comics, anywhere else. But, man, yeah. is he cool in that show. He's hilarious and horrifying at the same time, yeah. which is... Really funny or just batman's like weird it's like so, time to make tiger wasps and you're just yeah. like what that's your the villains power. are also really good in that show so it's very mixed in its eras a lot of characters like hawk and dove are still the brothers and it's not hawk after dove dies and then it's like his wife or whatever is dove that's what happens in- i don't know much about these i don't know that's oh. what happens in titans yeah okay so then boom <laughs> perfect so i totally <laughs> know Spoiler for uh, Titans and then comics for the past who knows how many years. But yeah. like, so for some reason, like that is the main one. So it's like, oh, this is Batman in the 50s and 60s. Because like Two Face, the Joker, all of his villains, Catwoman, they all look very old school Bill Finger, Bob Kane like designs. You know what I mean? So it seems super old school. But then it's like, okay, but I mean, Reyes is Blue Beetle instead of Ted Cord. So it's like we're kind of picking and choosing on like which versions of characters and old versions of characters are like it. And then also Robin isn't Nightwing yet, but he is already in Bloodhaven and he's not Robin for Batman. So we're at least past that, you know, so it's a little all over the place and like what it wants to be and where it's at. But for the most part, it's like set in the 50s, 60s. So what this is a big, long explanation to say, I like Batman Brave and the Bold, I would basically make it a Batman Brave and the Bold set. It's got a ton of team ups. That was like the name of the game for that entire TV show. Was that man teamed up with people? And to me, if this is a Batman set and Batman is teaming up with people, better. And obviously, we've seen literally nothing from Brave and the Bold for yeah. this set, besides the fact that I think that's what's going to happen because that's the version of Batman that teamed up with the Scooby Gang in like 2013 or whatever. So hopefully, and then that, and then just, yeah, more lanterns. Basically saying, make this as little of a Batman set as possible. <laughs> I don't. See, <laughs> would be like, yeah, you're We're not in charge of two hundred and fifty figure set, and it's gonna have one of every DC character we haven't had in modern for 
like at least three years. All, all the legacy cards are the LEs from War of Light. I actually would like that a lot, where it's like the John Stewart, the, Kyle Rayner, Dwight Gardner. Or no, those were. Oh, not those, those not those, not those were, LEs. Yeah, oh, those aren't War of Light LEs. The ones those that had like the base that could uh, have the little construct attached. Yeah, base yeah. the construct. Those would be really cool LEs. Slash like Atrocitus was an LE. It was gosh who else was there i think larflees uh, was wasn't he Larfle, yep larflees was also an le some of like the head honchos of lanterns like the main pink lantern girl uh fleas atrocitus probably a lot of the head honcho lanterns were also le's for the different cores so that'd be really there's, cool there's i like that pink lantern it's the star sapphire oh gosh you're right i'm so sorry i'm so i, I love how guy. all of them are like they're named after either the color or Nope, nope. I think they're just named after the color, other than Indigo. Uh, yeah, I think they're all named after the color, and then it's like Star True. Sapphire. And I'm like, technically, Sapphire is not a color, I don't think. True. That's a gem. Fuck. Could come in multiple colors, maybe. I don't know. And Sinestro Core is just named after yeah. Sinestro. You that know, is, that's the other they one. are yeah. yellow lanterns, but yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, next, Core. a question from Alex the Enchanter. One, if not the most important thing we need to play the game of hero clicks is dice i would say maybe the most important map i'll continue find a mechanic that would encourage collecting dice that could be randomly open in boosters sampled a toned down version of like field of Chaos die or maybe something along the lines of dice masters having a face representing a mechanical element to aim at me yeah think. uh this this sounds a lot like dice masters um it does collecting dice in boosters um ways that you could implement this in hero clicks that wouldn't be super annoying uh i don't i don't know if there is one so i like yeah. the idea of like being able to easily collect dice the one reason i haven't bought into dice masters though is because they're it's a d6 that isn't a classical die so you can't use it for any other game at least like no game to my knowledge uh because it has like repeating sides on it right so hey. that's the one reason i i Lord haven't Park. bought into dice masters because i can't reuse those dice so i think if it was something like an, it'd have to be like a normal d6 for me to encourage it um if you man i really don't know if you like it let's say like rally for example you have like a blue die and you roll the correct number with like that blue die then you get like two of those rally dies or you can put like one on two different characters cards or something like that's the only way I can think that you could swing it without being real weird about it um cuz yeah once you start giving bonuses to dice then like yeah. you know you have the whole tarot thing where people are like complaining that there's i mean you'd have to either cost the die or something but then like you have you have a point value that your opponent can't score you know you have this like extra thing right. that is either free or can't be attacked. Now, if you could attack your opponent's dice, it's oh like, gosh. oh, you only get to use one die. I, I KO'd one of your dice. You only get to use one die until your next turn. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be insane. Fun. Or maybe be actually broken. Uh, next turn, you can only roll 1d6 for dice. Maybe actually break the game there. Premise, I honestly just don't like. The question is fine. I don't like the idea of needing or dice. I'm very, you know, if you're D and D or maybe plug your ears. I'm super anti collecting dice. I think it's really dumb. Uh, for the game of Hero Clicks, you need two dice. Sick. You need some more to keep track of stuff. That's cool. We get enough. I've probably used the same three sets of dice every time I've got them. My Metal Captain America dice, General Metal dice. I ever started rolling, and then the dice Simeon got me that are Dial H dice, and I really not like changing from those unless the dice design is like super baller like earth x was the only time i ever switched to using different dice it was just an insanely awesome dice design me personally dice and token pack has beaten earth x in my opinion since then there have been solid ones Don't get me wrong there have been solid ones but i'm just i'm super not big on collecting dice it looks it gets like redundant after a while i love buying token packs for the tokens not so much a lot of the time for the dice that come with no offense avengers forever not super into the big a's <laughs> with the little thing at the top so i'm just i don't know i'm pretty anti-collecting dice my little brother is super into dnd i like dnd too i got one set of dnd's dice that's all i need i don't need more than one 
kind of ridiculous, kind of unnecessary to spend that much money on a game that you can really play for free. Um, sorry, player. Big, I'm a big dice player hater. I don't, I don't like, I don't like collecting dice. Super unnecessary. Um, biggest thing I would want is mission point characters come with a d20 that rolls up to a 20. That is easily turned. That'd be the only dice I would want included in a uh, mechanic wise that I can think of really for this question is I guess it's kind of what Magic the Gathering uses for their D20, right? As a spiral D20 that's easy to count from 1 to 20, yeah. I think. It's basically what I would want. That's it. For a mission point, D20 uh, basically be it. But maybe have a special logo. You know, if it had the Wrecking Crew, like, the Wrecker's face on it once he hit 20, you know what I mean? Like, that'd be really cool. The latest Thanos we got maybe has the gauntlet. He yeah. hits twenty, or him snapping when he hits twenty, or just I don't know. I just don't know how you have a a die mechanic. Yeah, I don't know that like because there's always going to be like one dice that's like the best at whatever it is, um, and I don't I don't like would it be a continuous effect like beginning of the turn you roll it and whatever the die like you know because then we just like enter like a uh, almost it, Faustian kind of situation. I get some like cheating dice where it's like Scarlet Witch. Uh, once per attack, you can roll this dice instead, and it has four, five, and six. Yeah. Instead of one, two, three, it just has another set of four, five, and six on it. Well, I was like, yeah, like, <laughs> beginning of the game, dice. like you, uh, you have the option to roll this dice, and it's got like a negative three, negative two, negative one, positive one, positive two, positive three, and like all your characters get their combat stats modified by that. So oh it's my like, god! Could turn out really good for you, like almost stupid hey. good, or could just like completely Dude, ruin the game for you. Shake hand. Are you willing to take that chance? You know, that could be so fun though. That would. Be, All right, you the game. Funny. I might get uh, plus three stats, or the worst I can get is a uh, negative three stats. Let's roll it, and it's like, oh my gosh. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> kind of funny though. Uh, but I yeah, I, I like collecting <laughs> dice. I just I can't think of a way to introduce dice collecting into Hero Clicks. Um, Especially already got like a collect six. Miniatures. Yeah, when you're when you're already collecting them from like dice and token packs, and you're already collecting miniatures and cards and everything else, I don't know how we could add dice. There's probably a way that I'm not thinking of, but yeah, really? off the top of my head, don't know. Um, all right, that is all the questions we have for this week's episode, which is going to kind of take us to our natural point in the episode. I do want to say future episodes upcoming here as we go into December. We'll probably have an episode uh, somewhere in there that'll be a holiday gift buying guide for you Clicks buddies where we kind of point out some things you own or heard of to get yourself or your friend group some really cool gifts and or if you want to send this to your significant other or whatever, that'll be a good episode for them to listen to as they try to buy a gift maybe for you. So we're nearing the end of the year. Like I already said, which means probably soonish. Once that thread goes up, Simi and I will also have our top ten figures of 2022. I assume Ooh, yeah. that thread is starting, so is be on the lookout for that. Jibo? Is that who does it? Jibo, yeah, I think he Jibo makes that thread, and he's made it the last couple of years. Do you remember last year he said Empire didn't count because Empire was so close to the end? So we can include Empire in this year's. Yeah, we might probably... just do what we did last year, where we say, "Here's an Empire pick," but also if we don't want to count that, or do you want to count that? Right, here's a different pick. Yeah, so that's coming up, which is cool. And also at the end of the year, we do our questions. So be on the lookout on Twitter and Facebook, where we're going to ask you guys, you know, what was your favorite sculpt of the year? What was your favorite uh, generic keyword of the year? What was your favorite shared trait? Favorite set, et cetera, et cetera. And then you guys are going to vote for the Dial H Award ceremony, best of this year a really awesome like year for hero clicks so i'm really curious to see what me and simian's top tens are going to be what the dial h awards ceremony ends up being for you know best set best super rare best chase blah 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 blah. so that's gonna be really cool that's kind of the content coming down the pike we're in a bit of a dry spot we get to now take december to look back on all the fondness and good memories we collect yeah and if you know you want to get some of the best ofs from this year, uh, you should check out CoolStuffInc.com where they don't only have the best ofs, they're sold out of some of the greatest ever. Um, but, you know, they've got most of the new Avengers Forever up. You can pre-order some of the Batman team-up stuff. And, yeah, make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. 
Speed Trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how would six uh, how would people humor? think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools it's not richer nonsense i'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever are you <laughs> kidding me hey google attack someone let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk at this rail.